I have a choice, if I'm home alone, I will always drift to the piano. I just, uh, it's just drawing me in. I can't help it. My mother started us on the ABC piano books, which are the ones that are like a kindergarten style piano book that are introduced before grade one on the conservatory system. I had an older brother and sister who did the same thing, so it was expected of me to just start with these ABC books. And my mother was my teacher when I was four. I don't think any kid really likes all the practicing. I did like the finished piece, right? I, when the piece was done and I could play it, that made me feel proud, but I didn't like the discipline of practicing. The biggest influence on my life was probably uh, my grade seven teacher, it was Donna Goban, who's no longer with us, but, and she had me from grade seven to grade 10, and she forced me to practice. I mean, she was just a very disciplined teacher, um, and she also rewarded you. She was, I, look, I look at her as the Simon Cowell of classical piano. She told you when you did something right, but she also was all over your case when you didn't do things well. She knew when you didn't practice. So that was the thing she taught me, is how to discipline myself. Well, I did go to university, I, but I studied uh, economics at Queen's, and I ended up joining a band uh, when I got out, and it was with some friends of mine. It was sort of a blues and jazz band. We called ourselves uh, CD Limits, and I'm still friends with those guys. But uh, right about that same time, I became interested in ragtime because it was a sheet-written music. So I could latch on to it. It was like classical. I could open the page, read it, and interpret it. And so I started... Um, learning a number of rags, and I gave a concert at Queen's University way back in the early 80s, just a lunchtime concert like I did today. Of some very difficult rags, I'm surprised I was able to do it back then. Um, and somebody came, and they were from Toronto, and they said, well, they wanted me to come up to Toronto, and uh, because this guy was connected with some ragtime people up there. So I went up and visited this guy, he was an older man, and he took me out to the Windsor Arms, where John Arpin was playing. And John Arpin was uh, a, a, one of Canada's most underrated players, but in the ragtime field, certainly well recognized, um, put out dozens of albums. Anyway, John was there playing, and this guy said, oh, this guy plays ragtime, John. So um, anyway, John asked me would I like to play something. And this is on a grand piano in a nice hotel, and I was shaking like a leaf. But I got up and played one of my own rags. And, uh, he, anyway, he was impressed enough, and he said, you know, who, who's teaching you and all that sort of stuff. I said, well, nobody, I'm just sort of self-disciplined. And he said, well, if you like, I would, I'll, I'll be your teacher. So I don't normally take on students, but I, if you want to, you know, and then. So I arranged to uh, go up to Toronto once a month to take lessons from John Arpin. And uh, he was my, probably my greatest influence to this day. Well, the, rag, the ragtime style, like ragtime and boogie woogie are quite separate. They're kind of like rock and roll versus hip hop, but people lump them together because it's piano. They think, oh, ragtime and boogie woogie, that's piano. But ragtime was 1895 to 1920. The left hand is going boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck. It's just, it's like that the whole way through the piece. There's the odd variation. The right hand is very syncopated. It's very syncopated right hand with a very straight left hand, right? That's ragtime. So in today's uh, demonstration, I was showing that boogie woogie they just kind of, you, you stay in one place and you roll around, da 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 You know, it's just kind of, it's a pounding, almost a driving rock and roll beat. Sometimes the boogies are shuffled, so instead of a da 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 it's da 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 but it's still kind of that rolling bass line. So it's really uh, different styles. They're miles apart. They're more than a generation apart. So um, anyway, I, I like the two styles. They mix them all together. I mean, it's interesting that the song that people know best, the ragtime tune people know best from the movie The Sting is The Entertainer, written in 1902. In the movie The Sting, that movie was from the 1930s. 
you know, so music from 1900 wasn't popular in the 1930s. But there's a, there's, you know, we weren't around then, so who are we to challenge that? You see, you hear this movie, you see this movie, you see the music, so you think, oh, that was the music of the 1930s, but it really wasn't. It was from the turn of the century. So anyway, different styles uh, and different ways of playing, but it's, it's good. I wouldn't want to just be stuck in one style. I talk to young people and they don't know what ragtime is. Uh, um, it, it is losing ground, for sure. I think it may see a resurgence just like in the movie The Sting where it gets featured in a film or something like that. And people say, what is that? Um, when I was putting my music on one of these sites, I had to pick a style and ragtime isn't even listed. You know, I've got a thousand styles to choose from, from heavy metal to grunge and hip hop and everything. Ragtime isn't listed. You can. You know, there's boogie woogie sometimes, there's jazz and blues, but ragtime isn't picked by the, the people who are writing the programs for selecting a style. So it's, it's less popular. I think it's great that people still play it, though. It's, it's part of our heritage. It's, it's where things, uh, music is, is affected by it to this day. And other, other people may not hear it because they may not know those early rags, but it still creeps up in music today. <laughs> Roger James taught me to play the banjo when I worked for the Island Queen, but just enough to get by, just a few strumming chords, you know, because you had to strum people on board, right? And I think I could fake it. For the most people, 99% of the audience didn't know that I wasn't a banjo player. But one guy came up to me once where the boat was going, and he said, I hope you don't play piano like you play banjo. <laughs> so he was a banjo player. So uh, that's the only other instrument. I have fiddled with guitar but not enough to call myself a guitar player. As a teenager, I grew up listening to not uh, ragtime music at all, but Led Zeppelin and Queen and Yes and things like that. So I have a different take on where music comes from, and I think my rags are a little different that way. So they're not really copies of Joplin rags at all. Uh, with Boogie Woogie, same thing. I was influenced by rock and roll, you know, so Burton Cummings, Jerry Lee Lewis, those sort of guys. They, Elton John, I mean, I have almost every Elton John record, so all of his early hits, I'm very uh, influenced by those popular writers, even on my song. So if you listen to Little Bird or something, you probably hear some Elton John in there, you know? Whenever I have the house alone, it's funny that I'm self-conscious, but I am tremendously self-conscious. If my wife and daughters are home, I only play songs I know because I'm afraid of making mistakes or something or improvising on something. So uh, when I'm alone in the house, I lift the lid of the piano and I try fiddling with um, a whole bunch of things. I, have a, I, I could probably write a book on what I think is behind composition, but a lot of times I'll take just two chords and say, what can I do with just these two chords, or just these three chords, or just this progression, and just work it over and over, and then say, I feel a song in there, or, or something like that. So I don't think I do it while I'm driving in the car or something. I do it at the piano. This, this is the first uh, recording I've done in over 15 years. I, sort of dropped out of the music business and when I, I got a job here at Royal Military College I thought you know now I can now I can actually make a CD I don't need to live on the music I'm gonna record what I want to do so I wrote some of my own songs plus I chose the ones that are my favorites and the CD has done well for itself I mean it's been on the CBC uh, Jack Thompson at the Lake plays it um, it's not hitting mainstream by any means but it is doing well. I'm happy with the production, the way the whole thing came out. And it's available at the website, notjustragtime.com. It's also available at some Kingston stores. And um, no, I'm very extremely happy that I did this because I think in a matter of even just a few years, I may not be able to play some of those boogie woogies because it's just, it's technically demanding and I'm starting to feel it in my fingers. So. Uh, I'm glad I did it. Well, I'm still, I'm going to say young and healthy. I might be stretching it there, but I'm very glad the way the CD worked out. I'm, I'm thrilled. I, 
I, I can't really explain it. I'm drawn towards it. I don't have a, an interest in learning guitar or flute or other things. I enjoy great musicians who have learned those things. I just want to play the piano.